There's something off about the Raspberry Pi 5. As I've been testing some of its competitors, I noticed something. Do you see it? You might have to look really closely. Well, not actually. All these rock chip boards have the same A76 CPU cores, and their multi-core multiplier is just about four times faster than single core. I mean, you expect if one core gets like 800, then four should get four times more, right? But the Raspberry Pi 5, its chip is only about two times faster using all four cores. That's weird. Uh, granted, the overall architecture is different between these chips, and the Rock chip boards do have four more cores, but those are slower A55 cores. That's not enough to explain just how bad the Pi 5 performs compared to how it should perform ideally. And I think the first clue about what's going on can be explained just by looking at the boards. Look at the Pi 5, specifically the memory chip. Now look at every single one of these Rock chip boards. See the difference? All the Rock chip boards have two memory chips. Having multiple physical chips can make memory access faster, and RAM is one of the biggest performance bottlenecks nowadays. But that doesn't explain everything. The LPDDR4X memory on the Pi 5 can handle over 4,000 mega transfers per second, and the Pi 4 was also gimped a bit, only being about 2.3 times faster on multi-core. The bigger problem, I think, is the memory controller on the chip that powers the Pi. From all my testing, it seems like it leaves some performance on the table, but I'm not sure why. What really brought this into focus, though, was a bunch of recent news reports. Raspberry Pi 5 patch boosts performance up to 18%. Kernel tweaks improve Raspberry Pi performance, and on and on. 18% faster with a 100-line patch? I mean, it's possible. Numa is something I've mostly encountered on my 128-core Ampere server hardware. And in the BIOS for that thing, you can choose how the CPU cores are laid out for memory access. You can use one giant 128-core chip, set it to emulate two 64-core hemispheres, or in four 32-core quadrants. That can make a huge difference for certain types of programs, how the cores address the RAM on the system. So at first glance, NUMA emulation could help. I mean, four cores on the Pi 5 is 32 times fewer cores than the server, but who knows? My test results don't back up the 18% claims, but they do show an improvement. I have a couple theories on what happened, but I'll get to those later. And I'll talk about another big performance gain you can get without recompiling the Linux kernel. More on that in a bit. But first, the NUMA emulation patch. An engineer at Egalia posted this patch to the Linux kernel mailing list. He writes, it can bring a significant performance uplift on Raspberry Pi 5. Specifically, Geekbench 6 scores can increase up to 18%. I couldn't replicate that, but I did see a 12% speed up for Geekbench and a 15% speed up for Linpack. So it's definitely got something to it. This patch isn't for the casual Pi user, though. Right now, to apply it, you have to pull it out of the kernel mailing list and rebuild your Pi kernel, enabling NUMA emulation support. Then you have to set this setting in your kernel command line file, reboot, and run any software you want to speed up with this NUMA control command. Now, that's a lot, but the idea is if this could be put into the Linux kernel or adopted in Raspberry Pi's own Linux fork, you could see a 5 to 10% speed up across the board. I ran my tests with Geekbench and my top 500 HPL benchmark, and both showed consistent improvements. Not only that, power efficiency was a little better too. I could get 2.76 gigaflops per watt with NUMA emulation, and only about 2.5 without. That means this patch makes things faster and makes the Pi 5 more power efficient at the same time. What's not to like? Well, the Linux kernel maintainer reviewing the patch mentioned a lack of documentation for one, and said the way this is architected, it might make more sense to do it in the firmware or bootloader instead of in the Linux kernel. However, Egalia's engineer pointed out that this expands existing functionality on x86, where you can already fake NUMA for CPUs to experiment with different memory layouts. So will this get merged in? Maybe, someday. Raspberry Pi could take it on in their own fork in the meantime, but I haven't seen any murmurs around that yet. Another question I've seen is whether this code could speed up rock chip boards too. After all, they have their own weird A76 plus A55 big little architecture that might do better with NUMA emulation. Well, the biggest challenge there is Rockchip doesn't publish updated kernel sources I could use to test it. It's a little messy on that side, and I'm not about to spend a few days just trying to hack older Linux source code. But getting back on the topic of kernel patches to improve performance, what if there was a way to suddenly save 50 megawatts of power every year just by implementing a sleep state for older Raspberry Pis? Well, assuming all 25 million Pi 1s and Pi 3s in the wild are actually running 24-7, which is a bit of a stretch, that's exactly what this kernel patch would do. The Raspberry Pi doesn't use much power when it's running, but it could use even less if it implemented sleep states. 
Basically, when a pie is idle, it's still burning up energy waiting for the next bit of work to happen. You can turn off certain parts of a chip when it's not doing anything and save some power. Or you could even put a whole system in a sleep mode, but that's not quite what this patch does. The patch is still under review, but for the original Pi Model B, Pi 3A+, and Pi 3B+, it adds on suspend to idle support. There's some issue with the USB chip not being able to power down, but other than that, it does shave off 22% of idle power draw on those Pis. And it'd be nice to see if we can get that kind of power savings at idle on a Pi 4 or Pi 5 too. These things all might happen someday, but what about something you can benefit from today? Well, five years ago, I wrote about how the latest and greatest A2 microSD cards had really terrible support and could actually be slower than A1 cards. Like, this SanDisk Extreme A2 card only gets a little over 1,000 IOPS random write and 3,000 random read. That's slower than the minimum 2,000 and 4,000 in the A2 class specs. But as I wrote in my blog post, the A2 speeds rely on command queuing and RAM caching to work. Well, Raspberry Pi just implemented support for command queuing. And just like DRAMless NVMe SSDs can go faster using the system's RAM, now A2 microSD cards can go faster on the Pi 5 using command queuing. How fast? Well, two to three times faster, which is pretty significant for some things like launching apps or upgrading your Pi. These numbers were from Raspberry Pi's diagnostics tool, but when I run my own benchmarking, I noticed it doesn't make any difference at all for sequential access. But for all the random IO gains, there's a catch. Get it? A catch for the cache? MicroSD cards are already finicky when it comes to reliability. Some things like pulling out the boot drive from a booted Pi are dumb, of course, but right now your Pi would usually survive that. One Pi engineer in this thread mentioned this feature isn't enabled by default yet because of how it handles surprise card removals. The command queuing doesn't handle that well, and you can end up with more corrupt data. If you want to test this out on your Pi 5, you have to have an A2 class microSD card. Then you can add the SD CQE parameter in your config.txt file and reboot. I'm not sure if or when this will become a default option, but if it does, that'll be nice for people running the latest and greatest microSD cards. For my own needs, I'm leaning more on M.2 NVMe SSDs now, and I posted a video going over options for that earlier this year. Now, thinking about why my testing only showed a 12% improvement while Agalia's test showed 18%, my main theory is that maybe the engineer running the test was running an older Pi release for the baseline. Last year, some people discovered the 4GB Raspberry Pi 5 was actually performing better than the 8GB Pi 5. And after figuring out it had to do with the SDRAM refresh rates, Pi engineers pushed out a fix for it in April this year. If the Agalia engineer was comparing against older numbers, maybe that was tainting the results a bit. I know my first Geekbench 6 run from way back in September last year was only 1507 multi-core. If I take my score with NUMA emulation enabled, that's actually a 25% increase. So I'm not quite sure what happened, but this is one of the reasons why benchmarking is both a science and an art. You can just compare numbers, but context and the numbers you choose are both equally important. One thing that's a little more of an art, however, is pushing the Pi's clock beyond its limits. And in a future video, I'm going to see how far I can push an overvolted Pi 5. You didn't know it could be overvolted? Well, I didn't either until I saw this post from Jonatron. Subscribe if you want to see me hack away at this Pi 5 even more. And until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. I noticed something. The HVAC is on. That's what I noticed. Granted, the overall can be explained by just, but. Ah. This patch isn't for the casual blah, 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 blah. You could see a five to 10 percent two to three times faster, which is pregnant. But Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi could also take it in on their own, take it on. Mm -hmm.